Hello and welcome to Cisco ASA Training 101. My name is Don Crawley. I'm from soundtraining.net. We're the Seattle, Washington-based publisher of learning resources and provider of accelerated training for IT professionals. This time we're doing password recovery on the Cisco ASA Security Appliance. It's based on my book, The Accidental Administrator, Cisco ASA Security Appliance. The book is not required, but if you'd like to get a copy to follow along, it's available from our website at www.soundtraining.net slash bookstore or through Amazon and other resellers. The software version that we're using for this demonstration is uh, ASA version 9.0, but the stuff I'm going to show you is applicable to any version going all the way back to the original ASAs back in the mid-2000s. So whatever version you're working with, this should work for you as well. Prerequisites for this lesson, you need physical access to a Cisco ASA security appliance. The procedures that I'm going to show you have to be done through a serial console cable. They cannot be done across a network. Our equipment software requirements, well, as we mentioned, one Cisco ASA security appliance. The one I'm using is an ASA model 5505, but these procedures should work on any of the ASAs. You'll also need a computer for your management workstation. The one I'm using runs Microsoft Windows 8, but really it doesn't matter. You could do a Mac or a Linux or a Unix system as long as you have a, a terminal uh, window that you can access. You'll also need a Cisco console cable and perhaps a USB to serial adapter and then as I mentioned terminal emulation software. I'm using PuTTY but there are others that will work just as well and that's a matter of personal preference. Here's the network diagram for the video. It's pretty simple. As you can see, simply a management workstation connected via a serial console cable to a Cisco ASA security appliance. Here are the 10 steps for password recovery, and it's really pretty straightforward. You're going to power cycle the ASA and then interrupt the boot process when prompted. That will take you into what's called ROM monitor mode, and in ROM monitor mode, you'll change the configuration register to 0x41. The configuration register is a software value that tells the device how to boot, among other things. And when we change it to 0x41, that tells the device to ignore its saved configuration on boot. Now, after you change the configuration register, you'll reload the device, and when it boots, it will ignore its saved configuration because you set the configuration register to 0x41. You will then be able to enter privilege mode without a password because there's no configuration. Once you're in privilege mode, you'll copy the saved configuration into DRAM. Then you'll reset the passwords to a known value. You'll change the configuration register back to the default of 0x1, You'll save the new configuration, reload the ASA, and be done. So pretty straightforward, as you'll see as we do the demo. Here's your disclaimer. This video is provided solely as a courtesy to you, our viewer. There are no guarantees whatsoever. Please do not attempt these procedures on a production firewall without first testing them for security and suitability in a lab environment. These procedures may destroy your firewall's existing configuration. Certainly, they will destroy portions of it. Performing these procedures may open your firewall to the public internet and subject your network to attack, so make sure you have current backups and take precautions including data encryption and additional access controls to protect sensitive data. Just generally good advice. Here we go. So here's the PuTTY terminal window, and as you can see, the ASA is prompting me for a username, and let's just go ahead and enter Don, and then we'll put in a password. And... Uh-oh, I can't remember my password, so what do I do? Well, it's time to do password recovery. So we're going to power cycle the device, and when it comes back, we'll interrupt the boot process. So we're power cycling it, and in a moment, it's going to prompt us to either press uh, the escape or the space bar. We'll press escape, which interrupts the boot process. And now you can see we're at a ROM mon prompt. That means we're in ROM monitor mode. The pound zero is simply an indication of the line number. And we're going to issue the command confreg, C-O-N-F-R-E-G, C-O-N-F-R-E-G. And this tells us what our existing configuration register is. As you can see, it is 1, or uh, the 0x means hexadecimal, so it's hex 1. And it asks if we want to change the configuration. And yes, we do, but I don't want to do it through the prompts. I want to just do it by manually specifying the configuration register. So I'm going to say no here. And now I'm going to issue the command confreg, C-O-N-F-R-E-G, and 0x41, hex 41. And again, what that does is tells the device to ignore its saved configuration on boot. So we'll press Enter. It whirs for a few minutes as it makes the change. And as soon as it's done, we're going to issue the command boot to reboot the device. 
Let's let's just show you the new configuration register before we do that. So conf reg with no parameters. And there you can see it's hex 41. Again, I'm going to say no to changing the configuration, especially since we already have. And I'm going to issue the command boot to reboot the device. So here we go. And we'll do an edit here so you don't have to watch the whole process. And when we come back, the device will be booted, and I can show you how to do password recovery. So now we're booted, and let's uh, go into privilege mode. So I'll type EN, short for enable. Notice, by the way, that the prompt has changed. It now just says Cisco ASA instead of the specific host name that we'd configured earlier. That's because it hasn't read a configuration. There's no uh, startup configuration that it has read. We'll just press enter for the password because, again, there is no configuration in memory, so it doesn't have a password. So now we're in privilege mode. And now I can use the command copy startup config running config. I could abbreviate that start run. So copy start run. That's going to copy the saved configuration into DRAM and you'll notice the prompt will change now to the ASA01. Now the configuration that exists in DRAM now is the one that was saved but wasn't read on boot which means that it has the passwords, the unknown passwords in it. So now I can go into global configuration mode with the command configure terminal conf space t, abbreviating it that way, and change the password. So let's do enable password p at ss5678, for example. Let's also change the um, individual username password. So username don password p at ss1234. There we go. And that should do the trick. Let's save it back to flash memory. So we'll do a write mem. And let's change the configuration register back as well. So config-register 0x1. Let's issue the command show version to confirm that it has been changed. Down at the very bottom of the output, we'll be able to see whether it has or not. And there you can see it says configuration register is currently hex 41, will be hex 1 at the next reload. So that's where we want it. So we'll issue the command reload and confirm. And when it comes back, we will have a known password that we can use to log in. And again, we'll do a quick edit here so you don't have to watch the whole reboot process but I'll demo how we can log in as soon as it comes back. All right, so we're back. It is rebooted. Let's see if we can log on now. So username Don, and the password is p at ss1234. And there we go. Let's see if the new enable secret works as well. So we'll type en, short for enable, and put in p at ss5678. And sure enough, that works as well. We've got a document on our website that details these procedures as well. You can download it for free or just view it online at www.soundtraining.net slash cisco-asa-password-recovery. It's available for free. If you'd like more information in general, visit our website at www.soundtraining.net. I blog, rant sometimes, at www.soundtraining.net slash blog. You can follow us on Google+, Facebook, and Twitter. If you'd like more videos, Visit our video channel at www.soundtraining.net slash videos. And if you'd like to pick up a copy of the companion book, I would love for you to have a copy. It's available at the soundtraining.net slash bookstore or from Amazon and other resellers. Well, I hope this has been helpful. For soundtraining.net, I'm Don Crawley. We'll see you next time.